Hello and welcome to the MechSoft demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users in real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mechsoft.com. In this demonstration, Visual Mill 2016 is used to perform milling operations from a knowledge base as well as automated whole feature detection and machining. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. So you got the part open here. Now let's take a look at it from the top here. Right? The orientation needs to be adjusted, right? Right, right. So first step is to go ahead and click on setup and then click on orient part. And you can use these controls in here. You can pick a surface or you could say you want the the side that's facing the positive y coordinate axis to be your z axis. And then you pick OK, so that rotates the part right there. Now, okay. if you need to rotate in x and y, you can rotate it about x and y. Or if that okay. looks good, you're ready to program this part in here. So if you want. Okay. To what, what if I wanted to move that the origin to a corner now? Uh, we could do that. So Cause, cause I'm going to have to pick up edges to get my location there. Uh, we could use align set world coordinates and then you can pick set to part and you'll notice that if you pick a southwest corner it automatically finds the inner okay. and you can put it right there then pick OK and then you click on so the difference between the plugin for SOLIDWORKS and the standalone is the standalone you can easily move the part around it is not a parametric system so you can right the part to the origin in the parametric system which is the plug-in for SOLIDWORKS you basically orient or rotate the coordinate system in there so that's the only difference other than that the workflow is very similar in here so now okay. you got all of these information in here uh, if you wanted to program any tool paths uh, we can probably if you want to also cut these out we can program them uh, one of the nice things I want to point out here is we can take advantage of the machining operations that we programmed under the file so uh, first thing is to create your uh, orientation, then define your stock material in here, and then go ahead and create, select your post processor right there. So the workflow is very similar. What you noticed is when you looked at in SOLIDWORKS versus the standalone. And now we already have this setup in here. I want to only use a certain setup operation. So let's say I only want to profile cut these in here. I'm going to go to this tab called Knowledge Bases. Click on Load a Knowledge Base. I'll go into the folder where we had the Knowledge Base saved in here pick open and you'll see that it brought in all of the operations even though we programmed it in SOLIDWORKS and we saved them to a knowledge base we have the workflow in here so now I can drag and drop this operation from the knowledge bases tab into the machining browser it has information of your tool that you're using your feeds and feeds all of it is in there all I'm going to do is select the feature that I want to cut so let's say I want to just pick two of these edges for the purpose of demonstration in here and okay. now I go to my tool use the same 8 inch end mill you can see that the feeds and speeds are being loaded from the tool. If you want to modify it, go back and edit the tool. Go back and change it in here. You can say you only want to go 1500. And you can set it up right there. Save it as a tool. And that automatically also gets updated when you click on load from tool. And then you go to your clearance, your cutting parameters. Like it's saying determine using 3D model. And then the cut depth. You just pick the depth in here. You can pick the top edge. You can use the object snaps in here. Pick a point near the top edge, pick a point near this floor right there. So that's the total depth. You can go in multiple passes, and there it is. There's your tool path. Now, if you want to do multiple step overs in here, you can do that. Or if you want to change your tool, you can bring in your library of tools in here. You can go locate your uh, tool library where you have it saved, and then you can basically go ahead and uh, load the library of tools. So if I have it saved in a different folder, I can just go ahead and find my tool library. You can say I would like to load this inch library right there. And now I can say I want to use a you know, half an inch end mill as opposed to a eighth inch right there. Drag and drop, right click, regenerate. There's my tool pad. If I'd like to add additional passes in here, I can put in an additional step cut, generate it, and there it is. So now you have your tool pad program. And it's cutting out those two areas. Right? Okay. Now, if you do want it to cut a larger than this area in here, you can actually draw a boundary in here to extend it, and you can define that as your machining geometry. 
So I just showed mm -hmm. how easily you can take advantage of your knowledge bases. Right. Now the next thing we want to do is engrave these letters in here, right? Right. So you want to use a engraving bit for it. So I already have an engraving bit from my library in here. I have a 45 degree, I have a 30 degree, or if you want to use a 15 degree, we can add a new one to the list, depending on whatever size of the engraver. So what you're putting in is the taper angle in here. Right. This as a new tool. And I can go to two axis, select engraving, and pick the features. I can just go window select, grab those features, grab a tool, set the feet and speeds, go to thing parameters, give it a depth in here. I could say I'm only going to go down 50 thousandths. And if you want to do it in like two passes, you can put in two passes. And you can also set the sorting in here and generate it. So that'll give you an engraving cut. It's going down in two passes, as you notice it right there. There it is. Okay. And these, the cutters you, that, that you've got in your library there, will, will I get a library with my program? Yes, uh, there are standard libraries for English and metric tools that are included, and you have access to all of these tool types. You can also build your own libraries and save them to it as well. Okay, so how, how would I save a, a cutter to a library? So, so how, if I wanted to build my own library, how would I do that? Okay, um, so to save tools to a library, so once you define your tools, you would go to save library, save tool library. And then you can give it a name in here. So for example, I can call this um, my tools, my cutting tools. And save it. Okay. And then the next time you're working on a new project, you go to load tool library and just select the library you want to load. Select that file. It'll ask you do you want to replace the existing tool from the library. Okay. And then if I decide I want to add another cutter to that file. So let's go ahead and add a new cutter in here. Well, let's say we want to create edit tool. And let's go pick, uh, let's say we want to add maybe a, a, a bull nose cutter, a quarter inch. And I'll put in 25,000 right there. I'll hit save as new tool. It automatically tells you that the tool number is being repeated. Do you want to increment the tool number? Say yes and you have a tool saved, just go back and resave the same file right there. Okay. That's it. That's how easy it is. So the next time you open up a new file, you will automatically see that particular tool library. So when I hit new, you'll now notice that it has the new tool that you added right there. The new okay. Alright. Do you have any other questions on this part? Uh, I'm wondering if I, if I didn't send this file, but I have a plate that has a lot of holes in it. So I was wondering if you had something there where you could just drag and drop and it would automatically pick all the holes and orientate them you know, nice by size. It's called a uh, hole machining, and you can automatically select holes uh, based on a given size. Uh, it's called hole feature machining, so let me go ahead and give you a quick example of that here. So here I got a part, as you can see, has like a counter bore on it, right? Right. So we can actually do what is called hole feature detection, and then select just the face, and it'll automatically identify all the hole features on the part. So you can see there's a total of six repeats, or six instances of the same feature. And when you try to create a machining operation, it actually displays the cross section of the hole. It tells you exactly what the hole features are. Now you can yeah. actually choose what operations you'd like to program. You may want to do a uh, center drill, then you may want to do a deep drill, and then you probably want to just profile cut the hole on the top where the countersunk is. So once you select these, you can also specify the depths in here. You can say you only want to go down maybe 25 thousandths for the spot drill or the center drill, and then the deep drill you want to go all the way through. And the hole profile, you just need to profile the larger diameter section. It also displays the diameter and the cross section. 
Now, when you click on create whole feature operation set, it actually creates this operation set right in here. And if you need to go back and update your tool properties in here, so for example, here I could say I'd like to use a quarter inch uh, flat mill for the uh, profiling in here, right? I can go back Good. and regenerate, or I can do an eighth inch cutter. I can right click and regenerate. Also for the drilling, I could say I only want to use a quarter inch cutter. So I just drag and drop the tool on top of the operation. So you can see that the tools have been updated with what you picked. Okay, so you just drag and drop and then just uh, re to regenerate. Okay. Yep, regenerate. So the tool paths are now being generated. As you can see, you have a spot drill. You have a deep drill that goes all the way through. And then you have a whole profiling operation. Now, if you want to make any edits, you can double click on it and say you need to make a change. Now, for example, on the deep drill, you want to make sure it also compensates for the tip. So you say add tool tip to drill that. But you can see that okay. the depth was automatically determined. Now for the whole profiling, if you need to change the parameters, for example, the helix pitch, you can say you want to only have 25,000, create full helixes only, and that can go back and you can update the tool plan on it. So once you've established this workflow, you can actually save this operation in here to a knowledge base. And typically, you want to save this under the whole machining knowledge bases. Now, the advantage and the benefit of doing this is when you have parts that have the exact same whole cross-section, let's say we want to bring in another part in here that has the same type of holes on it, but the part could be different. It could be a larger plate, larger part. Right. Plate. So if you go ahead and identify these whole features on this part, it has those whole features identified. So you don't have to go through the process of, again, creating these whole features from it. What you can do instead is click on this button called Select Matching Knowledge Base and Create Whole Feature Machining Operation. So what this is going to do is it's going to go and check for matching whole feature operations that are saved in the knowledge base that you put in and see if we can find a match. If it mm -hmm. does find a match, it will automatically create the operations. You don't have to do any extra step. So all we did was load the part, identify the whole features, and then click on select matching knowledge base and if it finds it, it'll automatically create it. Now if it what if, if it finds more than one match, for example, let me go ahead and say I only want to do a deep drill and the whole profiling. So I'm gonna save this to an knowledge base again. I'm gonna call it part number two. So now I'm gonna click on select matching knowledge base again. Now we'll notice that it finds more than one knowledge base match found for the exact same cross-section. So it's going to ask you, would you like to use knowledge base number one or number two? So the number two only has two operations on it. So mm -hmm. if you click that and click on it, it automatically creates a tool for those. So that's the power of whole feature machining.